Tonight is June 15th, 2020. Hope everybody's doing well. I've got an amplifier here that I have been long in the making. It's got two, it's a stereo version, it's got two beautiful LS57s, left and right channel. In the middle it's got a very heavy duty uh, power transformer that I use in a voltage doubler. It's 176 volt secondary at 700 milliamps. Came out of a piece of equipment from Sandia Labs up around uh, Albuquerque. It's a Williamson design, except I'm using 6S, uh, excuse me, EL84s. No, no, EL34s, 6CA7, EL34s. Um, and all four of these EL34s are Mullard. They're about 1959 vintage. I've showed these before as I've compared them to the more modern day tubes, and they've always performed exceedingly well. And they do also in this. I'm using the Sylvania drivers. You know, this is the first, this is the input and the driver to these two. Same thing over here. The input, the driver to this stage, the left and the right. Um, see, I've got a left channel, right channel, gain and input. Same here. On the back, I've gotten to where I uh, pretty much use the uh, same layout all the time. Now these uh, UTC transformers don't have a 4, 8, and 16 ohm convenient output. You have to actually wire them. So I've got them wired for 8 ohms and fuse and I've just gotten to where I really like these little switches. I don't know why. But I put them in everything and I use the IEC connector so I don't have to have that power cord dangling everywhere and the right channel. And right there is the only mystery hole in the whole amplifier. I don't know what I was going to put there, but that's one hole that does nothing. And I, oftentimes, I just fill it up with a screw, and then I don't even, I don't even know. But one little mystery hole is uh, is okay. Now I've got to, I've got to show you underneath it. Okay, before I uh, flip it over, I'd like to uh, point out another couple of things. Let me zoom out here a little bit. I'm using a different camera. This is a 42 megapixel camera. So the, uh, the resolution I think is going to be really nice. It's been a couple of days since I first started videoing it. But I've been using these little insulated type um, RCA input jacks. And even though I ground this really close, uh, the other day I was working on a on a Mac MA, what is it called, the 2100. And I um, I put this grounding ring between the two and even though it should have been touching the chassis properly and everything I guess it wasn't touching this properly <laughs> oh my god when I turned it on it actually blew the fuse in the uh, mid-range and uh, tweeter portion of my uh, of my big speakers so while these are really good you want to make sure <laughs> that was quite a surprise you want to make sure that you've got the uh, grounding ring I mean it only makes sense you know I don't know why I missed it. I got it right on one channel and not on the other. I'm going to make sure it's under the, the nut here. So you've got a, a good ground or you will regret it. Another question I've been asked is uh, about the lettering. And I've commented on it. but uh, So I don't have to comment too many times. I just use these little things right here. These little brother. Uh, i got some other uh, smaller ones. But this one... I like because it uses a different tape and I in these I've used uh, clear tape with black lettering I think you've seen that you can see that clear tape with black lettering it looks pretty good I mean you can still see the uh, the clear but another thing I wish you could have seen is just how how nice these tubes are look at this most all the lettering is still on them EL346 CA7, see, made by Mullard, made in Great Britain. I'm just really, I just really feel uh, lucky to have those guys. Okay, let's flip this guy over and look at it from underneath. See if I can prop it up a little bit to get a, that'll work. Make sure the camera's on it, right? Let's zoom in just a little bit. It fills the screen. 
Okay, left channel, right channel. I try to be as symmetrical as I can. Input tube, driver, output tubes. Input tube, driver, output tubes. Here's the cathode resistors. I use a cathode bias. Maybe it's just laziness, I don't know. But it seems to work really good for the um, Muller design. I don't mean Muller, I mean Williamson. Uh, green wires are filament. Red wires are typically higher voltages. And white wires are typically uh, signal lines. I use a uh, um, shielded cable. By the way, i got to show you something here. To uh, hold down wires, this stuff right here, I'm not advertising for any of these people on purpose. This stuff right here is really good. It's a glue and then it's got a little uh, blue light that you shine on. The darn thing stuff actually works. And you can remove it. You can pull it off. Even in this amplifier, I remember when I put this capacitor in, it looked like uh, it had been used because of the way the insulation was pulled off the bottom. And it went bad. It opened up. And when it did, my voltage dropped from 450 to about 370. And of course, the uh, performance of it dropped dramatically. This transformer right here has got a, a common, a 105, a 117, and a 126 volt input. So it's got three nice taps on it. I'm using the 176 volt 700 milliamp in a voltage doubler. It's also got a 97 volt 550 milliamp. And then it's got a 6.3 volt 12 amp and a 6.3 volt 15 amp. This, this transformer is just massive. Although it it's, it's very, very dense and heavy, but it's, but it's not terribly large, as you saw from the top. This is a hum balance for the left channel, hum balance for the right channel. This is a, sets the cathode current balance. This is a, a 50 ohm wire wound 3 watt resistor. Got them off of eBay. And um, it goes between the cathodes. One side goes to one cathode, one side goes to the other, and the wiper goes out to the... Uh, the actual cathode bias resistor so left channel right channel uh, this one right here I'm really realizing that I don't need this I've mentioned this before but in the driver section uh, for the second 6SN7 they always put a little asterisk out there and say use 1% match 47k resistors well I found that if you put a 47k like in the cathode circuit and then you put a, in this case I've got a 22K in series with a 50K. So about the center point of this uh, pot, it allows me to absolutely perfectly balance uh, this driver tube. If you look at the original version of the Williamson amp, you'll see that. It's, it's a slightly different configuration, but it does exactly the same thing. They got a resistor coming down, and then they got a pot in the middle, and then they got a resistor down here. And the one this pot in the middle is, is hooked to the, uh, to the DC uh, supply, the DC rail, as many of you call it. Um, it's got big capacitors down here. These are all rated at 500 volts. The output is, is an even 450. Uh, by the time it gets through some dropping resistors, it's it's lower than that. So these are all 450 volt capacitors over here. I believe in large capacitors, but I think you could take that to a, a pretty insane level with uh, quickly diminishing returns. Uh, as far as uh, negative feedback, negative feedback is just amazingly critical. That's why I've got these little variable uh, trimmer capacitors on both sides. And again, left channel, right channel. The only place where left and right is not exactly the way you look at it is from the rear. From the, because otherwise I would have had to run all of the, the output circuits over to here and this one over to there. And I said, that's just not going to happen. Uh, I'll show you the square wave response on this. It's, it's actually quite amazing. So uh, without me babbling on any longer, uh, I will... Uh, I'll hook this thing up and we'll hook it up to the equipment and I'll, I'll show you how it performs. Okay, we're hooked up to, uh, we're pumping in some signal. I uh, got to move the camera around here a little bit. I think you can see everything without me having to zoom in and out too bad. We got our uh, kilohertz. 
hertz over here, 15 watts. I like to test everything at 15 watts now. 0.3% THD. There's sine wave, there's your power. That is the right channel, left and right channel perform exactly the same. I have no issue with it whatsoever. Uh, there's the uh, sine wave on it. And I'm going to show you something. Now what I'm going to do, I discovered this not too long ago, but I think this is really important to uh, mention again. These little hum pots right here make an enormous difference. I'm telling you, they make some serious difference in the spectral display. Okay. I can't zoom in as close with this camera as the other one. But I still think you're going to be able to see it. I sure hope so. Okay. Uh, I'll have to do some magnification here. I have to do some. Uh, uh, I'm going to do this. No, I can't do that. Okay. Sorry. I'm going to move the camera a little bit closer because it's really important that you see this. Okay, it's steady right now. Now I'm going to start it running. And that's what it looks like. Pretty good. See our 60 hertz over here? Now watch when I turn this hum pot. I'm going to unbalance it. Oops, wrong one. I'll try the other channel. Can you see all those spurs that come in there? Those are all multiples of 60 hertz. It's just all over the place, Mark. By, by it just even just slightly increasing. See, our THD really didn't go up. Look at our IMD, 0.23. We should think it keep running. I don't know if it's going to go down when I balance it or not, but just notice all of those spurs. Now, once I balance it, actually I balance it by looking over at the 60 hertz one, the one on the far left. See, when I dip that, I'm dipping this one right here. All the rest of them go away. I'm sure we can hear that. I think that's very important to note. Let's see, that's the right channel. I unbalanced the left channel a while ago, but I'll go back to it in a minute. So I wanted you to, I wanted to make sure that you saw that. Okay, now here's some other interesting things uh, about, I have found out about these, um, these transformers. Okay, let's just look at this right here. We got 15 watts. You can see that. You can see the display. Um, I've got it on uh, a kilohertz now. I'm going to put it on, on three kilohertz. That's going to allow me to do something, and you'll, you'll see why I'm doing this. Okay, three kilohertz. 15 watts. Nice display. Still got to see the THD and all of that stuff. It's important that you see all of it. Okay, I think you can see it right there. I'll leave the camera alone. Now, if we go to 300 hertz, it's still really pretty. 15, 300 hertz, 15 watts. Nice, beautiful side wave, THC 0.3. If we go to 30 hertz, beautiful display, 15 watts, 30 hertz. Distortion went up a little bit. Actually, I didn't think it went up quite that much, but it did. But if I go to watch this right here, but these transformers, except in one occasion, the Acrosound transformers just don't like to do 20 hertz. They don't like to do 20. Now I'm going to go down to 25. Actually, it's not too bad there, but look what the distortion went up to. You can see it in here. If I go to 20 hertz, it, it absolutely falls apart, and I, I really can't improve it over there. There's 20 hertz. Our distortion went way up. So these guys don't do frequencies very well below 30 hertz. Now I know that some people's not going to like that or agree with it, but I've measured it too many times, and I've also built other amplifiers using UTC transformers. And only one. It was called the W20. It was rated at 20 watts and ran four 6L6s in the output. It actually did 20 hertz, but it was a massive output transformer. Now, watch this. Let's go to 20 kilohertz. 20 kilohertz. The THD went up to 
THC drop to, our power drop to. And there's our 20,000. They do high frequency very, very well. And they just sound marvelous. It is absolutely the best sounding amplifier I've ever listened to. I know that sounds dramatic, but to me it's true. I absolutely love it. I love it more than my Macs and my Dynacos and any other homebrew amp I've ever made. This thing sounds fabulous. It's not, it's not you know, high and, and overpowering. It's just so crisp and clean. I think I know why that's, I think that's the reputation that these uh, Acrosound Transformers have. Well, they have a wonderful reputation, but to me, that's, that's what they do that is exceptional. So you saw what it did at 20 hertz, 30 hertz, a kilohertz, of course, that's the basic test frequency, and 20 kilohertz. So it does quite well. I know that these are not perfect conditions. We'll scan it here in a minute, and I'll show you how it, how it actually performs at uh, any kind of a reasonable listing level. We won't get too deep into decibels, but uh, it just, it's, it, it rock and roll. It, it does uh, classical music. It does Def Leppard, AC, DC, and oh, it's just, it's just wonderful. I, I can't say enough, I can't say enough good about how this old Williamson design with these uh, UTC transformers perform. Now, the Acrosound transformers actually do a better job at low frequencies. The Acrosound transformer is better at low frequencies than the UTC. And the UTC is better at high frequencies than the Acrosound. I will stand by that statement because I've built two darn many amplifiers and virtually every one of them is the Williamson driver, the 26SN7s. That is a fabulous driver. I have an amplifier. I'm going to point the camera up here at it. This amplifier right up there, which I know you can't see too much of. That amplifier right up there will do more than 80 watts. And it's a Williamson design. You can see it's got two uh, 6SN7s in it and some KT88s. Uh, I've already made a video of that one. So you get a lot of power. You can get plenty of drive signal to your output tubes with a Williamson design. Okay, I don't want to get too off of the subject and I don't want to make this too long. But the next one, the next piece I want to show you and then we'll wind it up, is I want to show you the square wave response of these transformers. It is it is amazing. Okay, what we're looking at right there is a one kilohertz square wave. Now that is some sharp coners and I can tune that. I can overshoot it a little bit and I can undershoot it. I can round it off ever so slightly with those little trimmer capacitors. They're a 180 picofarad. And it trims out at about 150. I had to do some tinkering with that. So you'll know that this is all 100% true. I'm going to glance up here. There's our power. And there's our frequency. Okay, that's one kilohertz. Just amazing. Excuse me. It's really important to get over and look at that leading edge. I can't get the camera. I don't think any further to the left. But here, I'll stretch it out a little bit. I mean, that is a minimal amount of ringing and overshoot. Sounds fabulous. Now, I'm going to go to 10 kilohertz right here. Okay, whoops, no, wrong button. 10 kilohertz. Isn't that great? Look at that leading edge. That is not a loss of high frequency response. Now, the power dropped a watt. And there's our 10 kilohertz. Well, it's uh, 25 hertz below, 24 hertz. Anyway, you see what I mean. That is a nice, nice response. I was actually comparing it the other day to my uh, Dynaco ST70. And uh, as much as we all like Dynaco, I'm telling you, it just, it, this is so superior. So this is not something I've done a lot. And uh, some of you gentlemen and ladies have made a suggestion to me to um, to use square wave uh, testing especially to finalize 
uh, that capacitor across the uh, feedback resistor assuming you want to use one and it's you don't have to but uh, the way this thing measures out is quite amazing if you ask me I, I think that's exceptionally good and and again I, I, it just sounds it sounds marvelous I wish I could play music for you I went to my friend's house the other day he has a set of these big tecton speakers oh they're gorgeous they're orange and oh we were playing with them and hooking this thing up to it and so many and I, I started making a bunch of videos and we started playing music which is what I wanted to post but then practically everything I recorded was flagged by uh, YouTube as uh, you know being owned by somebody else a copyright infringement and stuff and I don't like to I don't like to post any of that because if nothing else uh, well they throw all the advertisements they won't in there well they do that anyhow but uh, they will also bar it from many of the foreign countries okay you've probably stared at that thing long enough move the camera back around here so we can look at this big guy uh, one of the things there's some other little uh, little small things like in schematics I, I want to I want to uh, show you what I've learned too so let's stop the camera I think that's all the testing I need to do and I'll show you some things that I have found very interesting and uh, that I have uh, learned just recently Okay, I'm going to show you some schematics uh, that I have used in building Williamson amplifiers. And one, one of my favorites is this guy right here. This Heathkit Williamson type W4AM. See, it has used, it uses the two 6S N7s. Some of the higher gain ones use a 6S L7 over here. The 6S N7, I think everybody kind of knows this, is pretty much the same as a 12AU7 nowadays. And the 6S L7 is a high gain triode like the 12 x 7 pair 5881s, 5, 5 V4. Okay, but let me show you something that uh, maybe you've all, maybe you've wondered about. I, I certainly have until I did some research and figured out what it was. It's almost a historical thing that you have to put it in a kind of in a historical context. See this RC circuit right here? Well, this point right here is actually at ground. It's at signal ground because it's got this big capacitor taking it to ground right here so you could put it across that resistor or you could put it straight to ground it really wouldn't make any difference but it's called a pole and the pole of an RC circuit attenuates the signal what attenuates one particular frequency that's equal to 1 over 2 pi RC there's no square roots or anything in there just 1 over 2 pi times the resistor times the capacitor values resistor in ohms of course and the capacitor value in farads anyway if you do the math the 1 over 2 pi RC for a 4.7 K and a 420 picofarad capacitor you will see that it's about a megahertz so why in the world would you want to put something out there on the front end of an amplifier that wants to atten attenuate a megahertz it's because back in the 60s and the 70s when these things were made these things in the 60s there were AM radio stations everywhere and I remember this so well. You could just about always hear an AM station coming out of your out of your stereo. It came in through your uh, speaker leads. It came in through your high gain uh, phono leads. You know, for your record player, for your vinyl records. Just all over the place. Uh, now, that's one. Now, here are some some of the very earlier designs. Here's that uh, the the Williamson uh, UT. UTCW20. This one that used that very uh, exact transformer that I built for a young lady back in Kentucky actually did 20 hertz. But you <laughs> look, it's running four 6L6s. Now these are old 6L6s, no doubt. You know, they're the old metal type for 20 watts. And it did a darn good job at 20 watts. Actually, I think it did more like about 30. And it actually did 20 hertz. But this transformer T1 is a. Uh, LS, oh my god, that's it's so small. LS 60A, big guy, rare as hen's teeth. Okay, last thing here. If you look at some of these UTC amplifiers, well, let's see. Uh, they have one right here. They have one little um, capacitor. They didn't, they didn't bother to put a resistor in series with it. This, this very well may be to kill some of the uh, AM 
in the front end so you don't get AM but look what they put out here they put little RC circuits out here like on the screens you may see them on the plates you may see them even back here and if you do the 1 over 2 pi RC for them you will find out that their their pole is at about 70 kilohertz 70 70,000 hertz 70 kilohertz and I have seen it multiple times in the Williamson design where these old designs depending on the transformer depending on everything want to take off up there and have a a huge parasitic at 70 kilohertz. Of course you can't see it and you can't hear it but it's there. So I can guarantee you that in just about every case unless some of you can prove me wrong and I know that there's probably uh, some of you out there that knows more about this than me but that's what my research has dug up and it just makes so much sense I wanted to share it with you. So these little RC circuits again easiest seen here can be anywhere in here, in particular out here. And it's usually to kill the AM. Uh, stations getting, of course we don't have that problem anymore because not that many AM stations anymore. But in every little town, you know, they had more than 100 people back in, back in 50 years ago, there was an AM station. Now this one has what's called a Zobel network right here. And I'm not exactly sure what the Zobel network is really good for. I haven't done the See, this is a 47 ohm and a 0.1 microfarad. Um, I have read something up on that, but I really can't comment on it. I probably shouldn't have even brought it up. Well, maybe you guys can uh, can tell me what its real value is. Okay? Well, anyway, there it is. I hope everybody's doing well. I think this is the, the nicest sounding amplifier I've ever built, bar none. I do have uh, new tubes. I bought some of these fancy uh, Russian-made Genelex that perform very, very well in there. But I just I wanted to run the old ones. I like those uh, those modern-day Genelex tubes. They actually produce a, actually lower THD. But that is that. So if you're lucky enough to run across some of these little uh, LS 57s, LS 61s, whatever those transformers are, any of those UTC transformers, it will it will uh, make you a, a Williamson amplifier that just sounds marvelous. I've actually gotten into listening to my amplifiers a lot lately, which I haven't, which I generally don't do. I generally just build them, test them, and then set them on a shelf. And if I need a part out of them, I may disassemble them. I don't think I'll disassemble this one. I don't think I'll disassemble the one with the two uh, Acrosound transformers in it either. I don't know what I'm going to do with them anymore. I'm, I'm getting so darn many of these. Uh, I did work on a um, little Macintosh MC225 the other day. What a beauty. It's like a baby. It's like a baby uh, 275. I've got the big 275. But the uh, 225 from my friend here that's a musician says that it is just the absolute dream come true. It just has a sound that uh, can't be topped. It did have a problem, so I'm so glad he brought it in and we tested it. It had an 18K resistor in the 12AU7 cathode circuit that had opened up. And it just didn't work very well, that one channel, but we fixed that one pretty quick. So there you go. Stay safe, my friends, and uh, thank you for watching. And uh, constructive comments are, are uh, absolutely wonderful thing to engage in in these uh, amplifiers because many of you know as much or more than I do about it.